Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and this is part two of our beautiful little Christmas winter painting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this painting finishes up. All right, let's get started. So it's been a couple of weeks since we did our last one, so I gotta kind of recap what we did. First of all, if you haven't seen the video, go check it out first. But anyway, this is now, this is fully dry. This is oil paint, it's fully dry, nice and solid because it's been two weeks, oops, <laughs> maybe three weeks, I don't know. I, things have been a little crazy around here. Anyway, so everything looks good, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and start on my little house here and get this finished up. This is gonna be a lot more like an acrylic painting because the background is dry. So I'm starting with a little bit of, let me just show you some yellow and white. We're not gonna be using near as much paint today because most of the painting is blocked in and some of it's actually highlighted. At least the first highlight looks like it's down here. We will be probably accent highlighting everything and on this house, just simply highlighting it, right? That looks pretty good. It's nice to be able to put your hand anywhere, isn't it? All right, wipe your brush out and I'll take just a little bit of red and white. We want a lot of colors in this painting. One thing you'll probably not see in this painting is white snow. You'll probably see every other color in there, but you won't see white snow. All right, that's looking pretty decent. The light's coming across like this, so very quickly this needs to, to sneak out into kind of a purpley shadow. But anyway, I'm just gonna play around mostly with the roof and then I'll join you again for doing some details on the front. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place in a couple of windows here. You see I went ahead and painted a background of light color. And now we'll just sort of stick the windows right in. The one there. You can do kind of however many you want. That looks pretty decent. And then what you'll do is just take some dark color, well, mid-tone, not necessarily dark, and then go around these windows. Kind of just frame them up, make them look like they fit in the painting. Now one of the last things that we're gonna do is just paint on some icicles to this house. We very rarely, in fact, almost never do these, but they're kind of fun. So we'll do a few. There, I don't really know too much about icicle placement as far as like where they're actually supposed to go, but there you go. Kind of looks icicle-like, <laughs> not really. I'm sure that they only hang more in certain areas. I don't know, whatever. That's gonna be fine right there. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, let's see, maybe, we'll, let's get our, uh, I got a purpley color. I think my palette's a little bit of a mess right now, but I got this kind of messy purple color. I'll throw that here. All right, now let's go ahead and grab our three quarter brush and I've got some yellow already ready to go here. So we're going to go ahead and just drop right underneath the windows, especially, but we'll do it everywhere, everywhere that needs highlight and give this an accent highlight, just a couple strokes. It's okay if it looks a little rough and it may look a little, a little more rough than you're used to because of the, everything being all super dry and difficult to work with, but there you go. A little more red as you work away from the house. Nice. Just build it up in little rounded areas like this. Kind of mound it up. Oh yeah, that'll be really, really good. All right, now back to our yellow and white. Right down here, I think it'd be nice to start getting some, boy, that's already pretty bright. I, we got it really good last time. It just goes to show you don't need things and dry to get an extremely bright and vibrant painting. You can do it very easily and you get it very nice and bright because look, I'm putting on pure light color and you can barely, barely see a difference. There, now obviously as you work away from the area that's light, kind of work over your darks, then it'll show up a little more. Oh, that's <laughs> whatever that is. We don't want it. <laughs> there we go. That looks a little better. Won't get carried away with these. Oh, I, I know we got our little Christmas tree right here. So let's go ahead and put a little more emphasis in this area. Good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in our little Christmas tree. It's not very big. And let me see. 
Yeah, it's about that tall. Actually, let's go, there's the house. Let's go above the house, just for the sake of breaking it up. You don't want to do the same exact height. That looks pretty good. And now as we go down, wow, this is a little different because it's dried up, of course. But we'll actually get more fuzzies, probably. There we go. We'll just work out a little shape. Not too much, very little paint, actually. Not too much paint at all, because we have to highlight this. There, we want, we want a lot of nice, pretty highlights on it. We don't want to be stuck. All right, that looks pretty good. Now it's kind of up to you where you want it to stop. I think we should go way down here. I think this should really take up a lot of the painting. This is a, a big feature, so we'll do that. Just now having to reload again. Yeah, there we go. It's a nice purple tone here, which will be good for highlighting. Now I've mixed up a pink color here on my filbert brush. I'm going to round off a few clumps of snow that are on this tree. This one, obviously, this goes without saying, but I always say it anyways. <laughs> this is a close tree. It's very much in the foreground. We want to see more detail and larger clumps than on these background trees, which are more just a suggestion of a tree. And this one, we're actually going to paint it in pretty accurately. See that? So I get these little rounded off clumps right on the ends of the branches like that. Good. Wipe your brush before reloading. Try to keep that paint pretty clean. That looks really very decent. Nice. Okay. We'll just keep going with this, leaving a lot of negative space. And then as we work to the left, we can actually go with a little purple, just like everything else. Good. Yeah, just grab some of this purple. I've still got some just laying around. There we go. I might even go just a little more vivid than that, but you can play around with this. There, that looks a little better. Now I've got our little detail round brush double loaded. I've got light on one side and darker color on the other side. It's not totally black, but let's go ahead and work on a little fence. So we pretty much finished up the snow back here and, and we want to do that before you put the fence in. Now we can work on our fence. You'll see why I double loaded. Makes things, up. oops. Okay, so I don't want to put one in front of the door. There we go. I'll erase that later, but hey, oils are forgiving. So when you have a lapse of thought, <laughs> you can fix it. And they come forward. See that? You want them to come sloping this way, not just parallel with the house. That's important because it adds a little depth. It tends to bring you into the painting. See that? And we'll probably want to darken them up. That's probably good enough. We'll want to darken them up just a bit. Um, but it's easier to kind of do the mid-tone right now and then kind of worry about the dark last. Ugh, can't talk. Too much concentration. It's a lot, of, a lot of elements in this painting. There, now I'm just bringing them off the side. The fence goes down and then there. All right, wipe that brush off. And I'm just gonna try to cap this with a little bit of snow. Like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight a little tree or bush thing. One of those decorative trees. It's right by the front of this house. Right there's kind of the, the trunk. Good, okay. This is important, don't skip this because you need this because it'll help to tie your building in with the painting. Otherwise, it kind of just floats out there in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't look right. So don't skip these sort of things that meant it didn't have to be trees, but something to push your house into the painting. I like the way that that sort of plants it into the painting. Very nice. All right, that looks, that looks pretty decent. It really didn't need a whole lot more, I don't think. Good. Now on this one, a little dark and a little light. I'm double loading again. And I would love to see the trunk of this tree come down, maybe even over the fence. And again, what it, it pushes the fence 
That's what it does. It pushes the fence right into the painting. Oh yeah. So it's all about kind of burying every layer behind another layer to create that extra sense of depth. That's cool. That works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight our little trees here with some yellow and white. And I've already put down my red tones quite a while ago, actually. And that helps us because when we stroke over this, it just becomes a little bit of a soft orange. And I like that. I think that works with this painting. Nice. So it's important you kind of think about your underpainting when you, when you highlight with yellow, because yellow is one of those things that can go green very quickly. And it's not just blue. Like if you put yellow and black, they'll make a, a green of some kind. It's not the same, but, or if you even get some brown and yellow, there's a lot of different combinations that make a, a green. So kind of watch out for that. There, that's, that's looking pretty decent. I like that, not too crazy because it will take away from the focus of the house. There. Now at least, as far as highlighting goes, at least this dark here is dry from last time we were painting on it. So that's a bonus. We can kind of use less paint. Normally I would glop this on quite a bit thicker. Now it's finally time to kind of finish up our Christmas tree. And really this is one of the last things we're going to do. I just have a little red on the detail round. It's as simple as that. And they just dot in some lights. And of course you want them all different colors. You don't want just red or just any one color. Nice. All right. That looks pretty decent, doesn't it? We can do lights way over on the house. We'll just do them the same way. Super easy. Just touch them right on. Okay. That's probably enough red ones. Let's change to anything. Let's change to yellow. We'll do some yellow ones. I'm not even washing my brush or washing. Of course I'm not, I'm not wiping my brush. Okay. I'm going to wipe it a little more. <laughs> oh boy. Good thing we're almost done. <laughs> Yeah, that looks good. I like it. We're really, really starting to kind of come together. Do your best here not to get to any symmetrical shapes. That'd be like about the only thing that could go wrong here. One of the last thing, well, really the last thing we're going to do is finish up with our liner brush. Yeah, really, I don't think the painting needs anything else. Just a few uh, crisp liner brush strokes and, and I'm going to be done. This has been a couple of episodes here in the making and I actually think it turned out really pretty good. <laughs> I'm actually very happy with it. This is the largest um, kind of colorful winter scene that I think I've ever done as far as I remember. There. But I, I enjoyed doing it. I think it really is colorful and pretty. I don't know. Just kind of warms up the room, doesn't it? All right, that looks good enough. I don't want to overdo the details. Just a few here and there will be all we need. A few extra branches never hurt anything though. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.